Hey guys, BMS here, and welcome back to a game that proved that there's no better way to show off your 8 bits than to fight the undead without pants. It's Castlevania 3. And this is it, folks. This is the last level here. Uh, basically, the Castle Keep, you know, Dracula's Lair, the eternal level of fuckery, whatever you want to call this place, this is it, and it's the last of it. Uh, it's a really short level, one of the shortest in the game. Don't let that fool you, it's also one of the toughest, mainly because of this first half right here. The second screen, you're dealing with the auto-scroll downwards, a lot of gaps, you've got to deal with Medusa heads, or on the second quest, skull heads, which just compound the fuckery going on here. Uh, that and, about halfway down, you can really fuck yourself by going to the left here, which it's actually the shortest route, but with the skull heads, a lot more dangerous. But like I said, something else that compounds the fuckery, crumble blocks. Now you're more than likely, unless you get this down to perfection, with a little bit of luck, Take a lot of damage in that room. This is bad because this one right here, very fucking difficult. Oh yes. The first bone pillar goes down without a fight, but the second one is positioned to where you have to fight him while standing on crumble blocks. With the whip only, this is fucking hard. More than likely, couple that with the bats, you're gonna die here. This is doubly bad because there's no checkpoint between that and the beginning of the level, so you get to do it all over again until you make it through. Wonderful. But, you get through the checkpoint, and you're halfway there. This room really isn't that big of a deal. Uh, you've only got one spider, red skeleton, red whip skeleton, and a bone throwing skeleton. Not too bad. Make it through there, and you come up to the pendulum room, a la the clock tower, the second stage. This one's a little more complex. You've got bats flying in left and right. Uh, but if you were playing the second level on the second quest, you should be used to this. Uh, it's really not that difficult. The only hard part here is the jump between the second and third pendulum. You have to kind of finagle it, because if you wait right there, you can jump over the third pendulum, which is very bad. Very bad indeed. Now, a difference between the American version and the, uh, the Japanese version. Japanese version, if you die at Dracula, you'll start off on this screen here. The American version, you start all the way back at the door. It just kind of compounds the difficulty. Anyway, with that, hell, we're at the final boss himself, Dracula. Uh, this one, his first form, he's nowhere near as tall as he was in Castlevania 1, and this is his only attack. He'll move to certain spots in the room. Uh, first, he'll raise two flame pillars on each side of you, and then a second later, he'll shoot out a giant one wherever you're standing. If you stand too close to him when he uh, first raises his wand, you'll have no room to move left and right. That can really screw yourself over. So be careful where you stand, and his first form really goes down without much of a hitch. Then he'll transform into... You know, I really don't know what this thing is supposed to be, whether it's supposed to be Legion or what, but it's it's ugly and it's got five faces that spit blood on, down on you. Uh, without a sub-weapon, this can be very fucking hard, because a lot of times he likes to do what he's doing right there and stay just out of whipping range. That, nine times out of ten, you're safe in the corners, but every now and then, He'll trap you in there, and there's nothing, absolutely nothing you can do to avoid getting hit. Really, if you've got the axe sub-weapon especially, this guy goes down real easy. Uh, but once again, with the whip only, it's basically a game against time, because a lot of the time he'll just stay up out of reach and spit shit at you. Very bad indeed. Anyway, lucky enough, he'll come down, you can finish him off. And Dracula transforms into his third and final form, which is... I'm not really certain what it's supposed to be. I mean, it's a big purple demon, I know, of course, but his head looks like a fucking... I don't know, some kind of a crazy chicken head or something, I don't know. Anyway, uh, it's mm, kind of difficult, actually. He'll shoot those laser beams from both of his hands and his eyes, uh, and he'll alternate between them. Now, this is a big difference between the American and Japanese version. I'll cover this in the region difference video, of course. But it just needs to be pointed out that the lasers are much harder to dodge and much more accurate in the American version. Another thing you gotta watch out for is that he'll take segments of the floor and use them as platforms. And if you're not careful, if you're in mid-jump, it has been ha it has been done before that you know the platform will disappear out from underneath you. That's bad. <clears throat> Needless to say. Anyway. Just take your time, ride the platforms, dodge the lasers, and you should eventually get this guy. Now, if you have the axe sub-weapon, you can cheese this guy by standing on the right side of the screen and just pitch axes at him. 
His lasers are a lot easier to dodge there, and uh, eventually he'll go down. But with the whip only, you kind of have to be more careful. Anywho, you'll eventually whittle his health down to nil, and that's a wrap. You've finally done it, you beat Dracula. And one of the hardest games in the Castlevania series, so rejoice. Enjoy the heartstring pulling ending. Nifty fact is the fact that the text slightly changes in the epilogue depending on what character you use. And they actually thought to include an ending for Trevor only, which is quite nice attention, de attention to detail there. Of course, Trevor secretly hopes he'll get the respect he deserves. Granted, my opinion is that because this is the 15th century, he's probably more than likely going to run into something like this. The people probably told him something like this. You know, hey man, you know, thanks a hell of a lot for single-handedly defeating an army of undead and putting Dracula to sleep for another hundred years. Here, have this plaque you can hang up in your house and a loaf of bread. Now get the fuck out of town, we don't ever want to see you again because you're scaring the shit out of people, you superhuman motherfucker. But, you know... Maybe that's just my take on it. Anyway, after you dry your eyes with some Kleenex, it's time for the extremely short credit staff roll, which... I'm sure there were more people that worked on this game than this. I mean, there's only like ten names in the credits. But another little fun fact is that you don't actually get to see the real credit sequence unless you beat the game on the second quest. And your first time through, it'll simply list the names of the characters. You know, Trevor Belmont, Alucard, blah blah blah. Uh, which kind of makes me wonder just how many people actually saw this sequence as the second quest. It's fucking hard, man. Not many people, I would imagine, were actually able to make it through there. Uh, anyway, that does it for Castlevania 3. Uh, I really enjoyed making this for you guys, and I hope it gets a few of you to try this one out. As like I said before, this is my favorite of the series, and is about as close to a perfect Castlevania game as you can get, in my opinion, anyway. Uh, before I leave, I'd also like to give a little thanks to Dectalon for starting up a hard games thread. I mean, anybody that hasn't already, take a look. You definitely need to, because there's some good people doing some great games in there. Uh, I first got hooked on it by watching Freezing Inferno's LP of Contra 4. He's unbelievably good at the damn thing and seemed to have a really good time making it. Uh, speaking of Contra, Slow Beef's No Death Run of uh, Contra 3 on hard was amazing. Uh, right now, I'm really keeping up with Death Chicken's run of Maximum Carnage. It's a very, very tough beat-em-up type game and he's completely destroying the damn thing. And lastly, you know, while I'm on the, the, the shill train here, I'd like to recommend King Effing Frost Castlevania 1 run through. He's doing a really great job picking the game apart, I mean, especially given how hard it is, and he's showing off some really cool stuff in there, so definitely take a look at that. Uh, I mean, there's a ton of others in the thread that it take way too long to mention, so I'll just say go take a look, because there's a lot of hard games and there's a lot of different run-throughs of them, and there's sure to be something in there that'll suit your fancy, whatever it is. Anywho, once again, I really enjoyed making this, and I hope you guys were able to glean some good stuff from it. And I'll catch you all next time. Take care.